I guess a lot of people enjoyed the last video, so here I am making a part 2 as requested. Once again, we will be using terminology like residue and timeline, just because those are common words used in the Mandela Effect community to explain what's going on. It's not my personal attribution. A lot of people thought that it was in my last video, and I just wanted to clarify that. With everything out of the way, let's get into the deeper parts of this iceberg and see what's changed or misremembered. Also, if you enjoy my content, be sure to subscribe to the channel and leave a like as it helps support my work tremendously. I truly do appreciate all those who got me to 45,000 subscribers. Thank you so much. Uncle Sam most Americans know this character, either from school or pop culture references. He was used by the US Army to attract young men and overall to promote American patriotism. Now these pictures that I've been showing have been altered, as he doesn't have red stripes on his hat in the original, though many people swear that he has always had red stripes on his hat. And some even remember learning in school that his hat was so important because the stars and stripes symbolized the American flag, making Uncle Sam a metaphor for the United States. How do you guys remember Uncle Sam? Barbie Girl Song Lyrics Many people remember the most popular line in the song being, I'm a Barbie girl in a Barbie world. Though this isn't the case, the real lyrics are, I'm a Barbie girl in the Barbie world. This one seems like a simple mix-up though, as they both sound extremely similar if sung fast enough. Copo Noodles Now before you start going crazy, yes, Copo Noodles does in fact exist, or did, should I say, but it was simply rebranded to Cup Noodles in 1993, and it has been like that ever since, though a large group of people remember it being named the Copo Noodles up until present day and don't ever remember a name change. Even a few Gen Z kids remember it this way, and they weren't even born in the time period in which they used the old logo. How do you remember it? Cup bowl noodles or cup noodles? And were you born before or after the name change in 1993? Moses had horns. Moses, a major figure in the Old Testament and for all Abrahamic religions, known for leading the Jews out of slavery in Egypt, parting the Red Sea, receiving the Ten Commandments, and apparently for having horns. Yep, you heard me right. Supposedly, the horns on the head of Moses apparently result from a translation of the Exodus book, which says that as he descended from Mount Sinai, he had two rays sticking out of his forehead, which some interpreted as horns and others as rays of light. You can see horns on many old statues and paintings that depict Moses because of this, notably the Moses statue by Michelangelo, which many swear didn't have horns before. The Song That Never Ends some of us most likely remember this song from elementary school. We were either the ones singing it or had classmates that would annoy us all day with the song. What's the Mandela effect about this one though? Well, some people recall the famous line in the song differently, believing that it was the song that never ends, but it's actually the song that doesn't end, throwing off the rhythm of the tune for some listeners who recall differently. There's also a few decade old videos with the title being the song that never ends, which completely contradicts the lyrics, which is rather intriguing to say the least. Pepto Bismol. I guess some people remember Pepto Bismol having an L at the end of the word Pepto, making it Pepto Bismol, though I remember the current version, and I personally don't recall it having an extra L. How about you guys? Mike and Ike. Do you remember there being a letter N in the middle of these two names? Well, that memory is most likely fabricated, as it has always had the word and in the middle, making it Mike and Ike, not Mike and Ike. Either way, it makes more sense with the and, but I do vaguely remember the N. JC Penny. Some people remember JC Penny being spelled JC Penny without an extra E, but it's confirmed that JC Penny was always spelled with an extra E. Some people think that calling it a Mandela effect is a stretch, but how do you recall it being spelled? To me, a single E looks more aesthetically pleasing, but the extra E might be a reference to a name or something. Jaws Famous Line This one is referencing the We're Gonna Need a Bigger Boat line from the classic film Jaws. When reenacting the line, most people remember it stating, We're Gonna Need a Bigger Boat, but in the film, it actually says, You're Going to Need a Bigger Boat which has some people puzzled as they distinctively remember where, not your. 
KCAT logo. How do you recall the KCAT logo looking like? Does it have a dash in the center? Well, if you remember it that way, you'd be surprised to know that you're wrong. It has never had a dash in the middle, which has left many people astounded. I personally recall the dash in the middle, but I have to admit, I may have only glanced over the logo a few times without paying it too much attention. Shaggy from Scooby-Doo How do you guys remember Shaggy from the original Scooby-Doo series? Does he have a noticeable Adam's apple? If you remember him having one, you're misremembering, because he's not seen with an Adam's apple in the entirety of the show, although people swear it's one of his most prominent character features. Target Logo Which one of these do you think is the official Target logo? Well, some may be surprised when I tell you that it's the one on the far left. Many individuals seem to remember the Target logo having more than one circle, when truly it's only got a single circle surrounding a dot. Some may say, well, it's simply updated to fit the current logo aesthetic trend, but that's wrong because the logo has been like that since 1968 and hasn't changed since. Albert Einstein Insanity Quote There's a very famous quote that's almost always attributed to Albert Einstein, stating, Insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. Well, Albert Einstein never said this. The original can be traced back to Rita Mae Brown, the mystery novelist, in her 1983 book, Sudden Death, where a fictional character says the line. I gotta admit, this one kinda tore me up, as I've always remembered that quote coming from Einstein, applying it to my life. Though so far it turned out to be good advice, so I'm not too mad at myself for not investigating where it came from. Let's move on to the trenches. The Grinch. Now this is one that I don't completely agree with. I've always remembered the book and film both being titled How the Grinch Stole Christmas, though some vividly remember it being called The Grinch Who Stole Christmas, not How the Grinch Stole Christmas. But how do you recall the title? Tony the Tiger's Nose. How do you recall Tony the Tiger's Nose? Is it blue or black? Well, it's actually blue which has some people confused as they recall the character having a regular black nose, finding the current tiger off-putting. To be honest, I can see why people may have misremembered it being black as they're both dark colors. Or black is in a color, so... Uh. Disney's The Sword in the Stone Disney's The Sword in the Stone is a classic that most people have watched or at least have seen the cover art. According to some, this film has changed. The sword in the animated movie was unable to be removed from a large stone, right? It was just stuck there. Well, no, it was actually stuck in an anvil on top of a stone-like structure. Do you guys remember the anvil or a large, rough-looking rock? I recall the latter. Let me know in the comments, though. Objects in the Mirror So you know the Objects in the Mirror safety warning engraved on the passenger side mirrors of vehicles? How do you remember the warning? Was it objects in a mirror may be closer than they appear? Well, a lot of people recall it this way, but it's not correct. It's actually objects in the mirror are closer than they appear. Maybe is never applied in the sentence. Me Tarzan You Jane This entry is in reference to a supposed line in Disney's Tarzan. Many people recall a line where Tarzan says, Me Tarzan You Jane. But this line simply doesn't exist in the film, though a variation of it does, which may have led to this confusion, where Jane points to Tarzan and says his name, and then points to herself, saying her own name. This would overall make more sense, as Tarzan most likely wouldn't know the words you and me anyways. The Thinker The Thinker is a bronze sculpture by Gust Rodin, usually placed on a stone pedestal. The work depicts a nude male figure of heroic size sitting on a rock. He is seen leaning over his right elbow placed under his left thigh, holding the weight of his chin on the back of his right hand. The pose is one of deep thought and contemplation, and the statue is often used as an image to represent philosophy. Though this isn't how everyone remembers the statue's pose, some recall him placing his hand on or near his forehead and not on his chin. Residue in the form of an IBM commercial depicts the thinker with his hand on his head, how Mandela Effect followers remember. There are also entire group pictures of people doing the wrong pose of the thinker in front of the statue itself, which is intriguing to say the least. They also don't recall him sporting a hat, 
which he's always had, though I can see how it's mistaken for hair from a far distance. The Jungle Book Dance Scene In the scene where Baloo starts to dance in a skirt, do you guys recall him wearing a coconut bra? Well, tons of people do, and are stunned when they rewatch the film and find that he's only wearing a skirt, with no coconut bra on sight. Though in the live action performances in Disneyland Paris, he's seen wearing a coconut bra, exactly how a lot of people remember. This entry really stood out to me, as I strongly remember him wearing a coconut bra, and it's crazy to think that even Disneyland misremembered him as well. Is this proof of the Mandela effect, or simply a mass delusion? Around the World in 80 Days Around the World in 80 Days is a classic piece of literature, so much so that it's got its own film adaptation. The Mandela effect is on the transportation that they used to go around the world. Was it a hot air balloon or trains and ships? If you thought it was a hot air balloon, you might be experiencing a Mandela effect because it wasn't used at all. Phileas Fogg does not travel in a hot air balloon in the Around the World in 80 Days book. Yes, there's a mention of such travel in chapter 32, but the idea is quickly dropped. He used trains, elephants, sailboats, steamboats, and sledges, but never a hot air balloon. This is kind of crazy because mostly all the book covers depict a hot air balloon. Missing Scooby-Doo Character I couldn't find much about this entry until I came across this reddit post by JackB1411, reading, Okay, so people are saying I'm crazy, but others remember what I'm saying. I saw some other Instagram meme of a reddit screenshot where a guy was saying that how when he looked at the gang from Scooby-Doo, that he logically knew that there were only five members. Shaggy, Scooby, Velma, Daphne, and Fred, but he feels like something is missing. I remember a sixth character. I don't remember his name, but it was another male character. He wore a blue shirt with dark gray pants, and he had more of a circular face than Fred, but more chiseled than Shaggy. I also remember an orange collar slash scarf, but I could just be getting confused with Fred. Do you guys remember a sixth character in the gang? If so, leave details in the comments. Let's move on to the ocean floor. Frog in boiling water. So most of us know the fact that if you place a frog in cold water and then slowly start increasing to boiling temperature, it won't try to escape because it wouldn't recognize the difference in temperature, right? Well, this is untrue, as experiments have shown that they begin to feel uncomfortable and try to escape as the temperature nears boiling point, though tons of people claim to have been taught this in school as being fact instead of a metaphor for complacency. How do you remember it being taught to you? Dazed and Confused In the film Dazed and Confused, there's a scene in which one of the characters is spinning a globe, which is said to depict an unexplained landmass to the west of Australia. After people started to point this out, others began to recall learning about this missing landmass, believing that they shifted realities at some point, as there are no large landmasses directly to the west of Australia, on any current maps or globes. Some even came to the conclusion that it may have been the cause for the disappearance of Malaysia Airlines Flight 370. Hitler had brown eyes. Many people distinctively remember Hitler having brown eyes, in contradiction to what he idolized, which was blue eyes. But this is completely wrong. He's always had blue eyes and it was a notable feature about him, according to history books. Though people who were affected by this Mandela effect specifically remember being taught about this contradiction in school, and how much of a big deal it was because he didn't fit his own ideal image of what a human should be. Do you remember Hitler having brown eyes? North Pole Landmass The North Pole is on the point of the Northern Hemisphere, where the Earth's axis of rotation meets its surface. Some recall there being a large landmass full of ice located there, but this is simply not the case. A quick search on Google disproves this. See? No landmass. Even checking Google Earth, we see nothing there. Though this may be confused with the ice and the North Pole. See, the North Pole sits in the middle of the Arctic Ocean, on water that is almost always covered in ice. The ice is about 2.3 meters or 6.10 feet thick, which may be confused as landmass to some. But what is your explanation on this Mandela effect? Tank Man Didn't Die, Tiananmen Square 
The Tank Man is an unidentified protester who appears in a famous video in which he stands in front of three tanks and tries to block their passage during the 1989 Tiananmen Square protests against the Chinese Communist government. Contrary to what many believe, he was never run over or killed. Kurt Cobain's Fuzzy Pink Jacket A certain amount of fans remember Kurt Cobain wearing a fuzzy pink jacket alongside his white shades. These are recreations slash photoshopped pictures of what people remember, but looking at old photos of the artist, you won't find any of him wearing this infamous jacket that so many remember. Instead, you'll find him wearing a cheetah print jacket, and the closest thing you'll find is this bright pink coat and dress shirt that he wore once, though people say that these greatly differ from their memory. Do you recall him wearing a fuzzy pink jacket? The Peace Symbol Do you remember the peace symbol feet up or feet down? Well, a large group of people remember it feet up, although it wouldn't make much sense. The modern peace sign was designed by Gerald Holton for the British Campaign for Nuclear Disarmament in 1958. The vertical lines in the center represent the flag semaphore signal for the letter D, and the downward lines on either sides represent the semaphore signal for the letter N, N and D, standing for nuclear disarmament. But how do you recall the symbol? Eli Whitney was black. Eli Whitney Jr. was an American inventor, widely known for inventing the cotton gin, one of the key inventions of the Industrial Revolution that shaped the economy of the antebellum South. Many people remember him being a black man and finding it ironic that his invention was used to further perpetuate slavery. There are even old newspapers stating that he was a prominent black inventor. Even though history says otherwise, Eli Whitney was actually a white man who studied at Yale and would later go on to invent the cotton gin. So, I'm guessing someone at this school didn't double check their facts. The September 22nd and 23rd CERN Event Anomalies The name CERN is derived from the acronym for the European Council for Nuclear Research in French, a provisional body founded in 1952 with the mandate of establishing a world-class fundamental physics research organization in Europe. They are responsible for creating the Large Hadron Collider. According to Redditor Silent Chatter, on September 22, 2011, a scientist supposedly broke the speed of light, but this was later proved to be false due to the tools measuring the speed wrong. However, many claim that events and details of the 22nd and 23rd are switched or altered from their memory, and the scientist could be to blame. Some claim that this further perpetuated timeline shifts, causing more notable Mandela effects. 2012 was the last year on Earth. I know this one might sound ridiculous, but you know, gotta explain every entry. People believe the world really ended in 2012 in our original set reality. We are now living in an alternate reality, and YouTube has been accused of removing a bunch of videos related to the world ending in 2012 and CERN having something to do with it. And it could just be that they're trying to stop misinformation, or it could be that they're attempting to cover something up. People believe, using available data, knowledge, and machines, that CERN scientists have found a way to transfer each individual consciousness into an alternate reality that is most likely similar to our old base reality, but a little different, thus explaining all these Mandela effects. What do you think of this theory?